Hello, um, we want to start working on um, creating the surface area um, by rotating a line around the x-axis. Um, but before we can do this um, in MATLAB, we're, we're going to need to figure out how to just take any old line and rotate it. So that's what I want to do first is um, create a cylinder. So let me share my MATLAB screen. Okay, and I'm going to create a program called um, start a new program, create, well, create cylinder. And you should code along and, and do this on MATLAB while you're watching the video, all right? Because as you type it in, I think you'll understand it better. Um, so you haven't worked with 3D shapes yet, um, but so we're gonna sort of introduce that um, a little bit here, okay? Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, Let's put a comment on this. Um, this will create a cylindrical rotation of a line. Okay, so let's go from here. All right, so um, well, let me, two of these and let's set parameters. I'm going to give a vector called R, which will be our radial values. And we're just gonna put in a couple of simple radial values. Two, you can use spaces or use commas in between numbers. I just find it faster to just put spaces in there. So this is like a matrix um, with one row or sometimes called a vector of numbers. Um, whoops, oh, and that is not a comment. So R is being assigned. I should end that with a semicolon. And then let me put a comment. Uh, these will be the radial values. Okay. Um, now, all I have to do is let's do our calculations and plot. All right. So what I'm going to do is for my calculation section, it's this easy. I am going to create, these are capital X comma capital Y comma capital Z. I'm creating points in 3D space. All right, and these points are going to be given by cylinder R, okay? So, oh, and let me put a semicolon after that. All right, let's run this and see what happens. Um, oh, first of all, I need to uh, save this. What is this called? Uh, this is gonna be a cylindrical rotation. So now we have that saved, I can run it again. Okay, and you'll see nothing appears, but if I look in the workspace, um, we can see that X, Y, and Z are double values, okay? Um, so these are five, they're all five by 21, okay, in size, all right? Um, so let's see if we explore one of these, let's look inside, okay? So this is X. And you can see what's happening in the, the first three columns. Okay, that's a the two, three, five, five, two. Okay. Um, and then these are numbers um, going across the columns. Okay, that end up back to where we were. Okay, we're gonna connect up these points um, and their X values. Um, so the X values um, will be ranging. Um, we'll see why as we go along, okay? And the Y values, let's see what those look like. Um, those also are in a five by 21 array. And the Z values are also in a five by 21 array. Um, but let's just try to visualize what these are doing. Um, okay, so I'm going back to the code. And if I want to uh, visualize these, what I need to do is create a 3D surface. Whoops, so it's S-U-R-F. That's short for surface. And I'm going to do capital X comma capital Y comma capital Z. In MATLAB, when we're creating a mesh of points in 3D space, we often use capital letters. Um, so let me just run this now and let's see what happens. A figure pops up. Okay, so here's a figure. Um, let me dock the figure, all right? And you can see that what has happened, 
is we have this rotation in space of a number of points, okay? And you can kind of see that um, if I turn it like this, okay? You can see that the lowest layer looks like it has a radius of two. The next layer has a radius of three, then five, five again, and back to a radius of two, okay? Those correspond to the R values. Um, now I'm gonna put a few labels on here. Um, so let's see, uh, that's actually the calculation and plot. Well, we'll put these together. Um, let's X label uh, will be X. Y label Y and Z label Z. And it'll be a little more apparent what we have done here, okay? You can see that in the X direction, oh, that's the Y direction, whoops. So if I, I'm looking at the Y axis now, you can see that the Y values at their maximum um, at, in each layer correspond to the radial values, all right? And we've simply connected together these radial values in the Y direction, okay? If we turn it so we're looking in the, X direction, we see the same thing, okay? So what's happening is we've created a cylinder, okay, in the Z direction that's centered on the Z axis. Um, and the radius of that cylinder keeps changing in both the X and Y direction. So in the X, Y direction, we have, we basically, um, I'm looking down at it now, um, we've created, uh, you can see for the widest layer here, um, we've created a series of XY coordinates that create a circle, all right? Um, now, it doesn't quite look like a circle. It looks a little bit more of a, like an ellipse, but if I were to type in axis equal, now it looks more circular, okay, as I look down from above. So most of the points that we saw in the matrices for X and Y are the coordinates of the points along the circle. You can see where the lines come back together again. Um, but there's a circular set of points for all five layers, okay? So we can see there the kind of the purple layer at the bottom, then the purple blue transition, blue turquoise and turquoise yellow, and then the top. So those are the five different um, radii. Now we can also see that we know that we've made axis equal in the Z direction, the height is just one. So the cylinder command automatically um, creates a cylinder of height one. Let's stretch this out so the height of the cylinder is five. So I'm gonna put in an H equals five. And this will be for the cylinder height. Okay, and then let's come down here to um, the Z values. Okay, so the Z values went from zero to one. What I want to do is call these Z and make them H times the Z values that were originally there. So after I invoke the cylinder command in line eight, the Z values will range from zero to one, but now I'm going to multiply all of those values by H. So that should make them range from zero to five. All right, and let's run this again. And you can see now we have a cylindrical shape that does in fact have a height of five. Now we're not going to wanna to rotate around the Z axis. We actually wanna rotate over the X axis. So what I wanna play with is X, Y, Z is really a rotation of points. It's a right-handed coordinate system. X crossed into Y gives us Z, Y crossed into Z gives us X and so on. So let me move the Z to the front. We're gonna rotate these around. Now let's see what happens. Oh, the cylinder is suddenly sideways, but notice Y is last and Y is now going zero to one. Oh, and we have it stretched out. The Z values have been enlarged. We actually want to enlarge now. We want to say Y. Let me change this right here. Uh, y should be the height of the cylinder times Y. So we'll stretch those Y values out. And now we can see the Y values do go from zero to five. So now we have a cylinder um, that's stretched out 
um, around the y-axis. We're actually kind of looking at it from the opposite side. Let's look at it that way. Um, so we have radial values um, that are now spinning this horizontal axis now would be the y-axis. You can see it there, there at the bottom. So it spins around the y-axis. If we want it to spin around the x-axis, then let's move x to the final position. And then it would be uh, y, z, then x. And we will want to stretch the x values. Okay, so that we don't have a cylinder of just height one. And now you can see that it is rotated. If we look at this, um, the X axis would be the horizontal axis um, from the direction we're looking at this right now. And uh, so the cylinder is stretched out in that direction. If I wanted a cylinder to be just a plain old cylinder, I could actually just reduce this to those two numbers and run it again. And you'll see now it's a constant radius of two because all of the values in the, um, in the R um, vector R2, uh, if I want to change those again, it was like three, four, uh, or we went three, five, five, back to two. Now we're back to what we had before. If I want to make that taller, I can stretch the height out to 10. And now we can see the shape that we've created. Okay. Um, now you could actually, let's go a step further. Let's change our, instead of just being um, a limited set of values. Well, if we put more values in, let's do, um, let me put in five. Let's just add a couple more values. Um, we'll go back to four, then 2.5, and then two. As I put in more R values, um, you see that this kind of, as we curve it around, it becomes, you know, defined um, by more points. Okay, so you get a little more segments and it becomes curvier um, as we add more segments. Okay, so we can create a list of points for the radial values of a cylinder and declare the height of the cylinder. And then we can put those values, um, we can create a three dimensional array of points um, for storing those values, which will then allow us to do a surface plot of those points. Um, so that's the fundamental idea for creating cylinders, okay? Because we are going to want to take a line um, and create a surface by rotating it around. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video and we'll move on to another one.